Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark. Today, I'm putting adjustable camera plates on my car. Ah, oh, my finger. Now, if you guys remember in my earlier videos, I already put coilovers on my car. I went with the Petters Extremes. When I ordered them, I originally got some different camera plates, but it turns out they don't fit on those coilovers, so I ended up having to send them back. So, since I got Petters coilovers, I got the Petters camera plates. These ones look nice, and they should fit my application. The reason I got the other ones before is because the adjustment on these have the four little bolts, and the other one adjusted on the top. I don't remember exactly how, but it was gonna be a lot easier because when I put these on, this is actually going to be in a small hole. So I don't know how well I'll be able to reach these to adjust them. As you can see, the hole up top is actually pretty small. So I don't know how much I'm actually going to be able to access those four little bolts while it's on the car. When I do my adjustments, I may actually have to take my coilovers off. Now, there is adjustments on the coilovers so that I can just camber in and out a little bit. But it's not as much as I need. So I've downloaded an app on my phone. Uh, it's going to be able to give me a camber reading. Obviously, this is not the way you're supposed to be doing it. You should take it to a shop and have them do it on an alignment machine, but that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, as long as I can get consistent numbers left and right, I should be good, and I shouldn't really have to worry too much about it, as long as I'm driving straight and my tire wear is good. So, I'm at the storage unit right now, and as I said before, I'm looking for pretty much consistency, not really accuracy. So if you look in the top left corner, you can see that you know, I can check my camera that way. So. Let's check out what it is right now. The side says negative 1.5 degrees. So what I'm kind of looking for is I'm looking for in the area of about three. So let's see if these camera plates will make it three. All right, so there's my coil over. I got the camera plate mounted on top now. And basically the way that it works is that it adjusts the point of where you're actually mounted to the top. So if you're mounted further back, you can see that it goes back in. And if you're mounted towards the outside, you can see that this goes outside. So basically, your wheel, let me set this down so I can explain it. So basically, your wheel is going to be mounted like this. And as you move your camber plate, it's going to move your wheel in and out, which will give you more or less camber. So it got dark, and I wasn't able to actually videotape anything in the storage unit. I didn't really have any lights. I kind of did everything by flashlight last minute. But I want to show you guys what I got done. Now I got the camper plates installed and as you can see, uh, that's a little itty bitty hole. I don't think I'll actually be able to reach any of those bolts if I wanted to do an adjustment. I might be able to if I had an Allen key or something that might fit or maybe possibly a ball Allen, but I think that might be a little bit of a stretch to get that to fit in there. I can probably reach that one, that one back there, probably not. Now that I got the camber plates installed, you can kind of more visualize what I was talking about earlier. So here's the top of the camber plate. You can see I'm a little bit more towards the inside. So if we take a little closer look back, you can see that I have a little bit more negative camber in the front of my car. So if I was to take that and move it in and out, it would move the top of my wheel in and out. So I wanted to go with a little bit more negative camber. So I put it a little bit more towards the inside of the vehicle. I couldn't go to the full negative camber that I wanted because my adjustment knob on here on top would not fit in the hole when I had it all the way adjusted. So I'm just a little bit back, which is probably a good thing. I don't need to max everything out. All right, now that we've got the camber plates on, let's see how much more camber I have. So when we did it before, we were about negative 1.5. We are now sitting at about negative 2.7. So. I feel that that's pretty good improvement. One degree doesn't sound like a lot, but that might be all I need to actually fix my problem. Now, some of you might be wondering, what's the purpose of these camber plates? Why do I put them on my car? Now, there's two reasons people try to get more camber. One of them is for looks. Have you ever seen one of those imported cars that drive around that look like a Hot Wheels car that got stepped on and their wheels kind of stick in like this? That's more of a style. I don't really like that. That's not what I'm going for. I'm going for performance. So the performance aspect of having a little bit more camber. So here's the rear of my car. I have zero camber on these back wheels because I have a straight axle. I can't adjust camber, but you can look at my front wheel up there and you can see I have a little bit more negative camber. Now the idea is that when you go around a corner, let's say this is the outside of the turn or the outside of your car, your tire is 
fighting the force of the ground. So what's gonna happen is the tire is actually gonna tuck underneath on the wheel. And what you want it to do is you want the tire to be flat on the ground as you're trying to make a corner. So if I have zero camber like I do in the back of the car, what's basically ha gonna happen is the tire is gonna kinda come up on the inside and I'm not gonna get as much traction because I'm not gonna have as much tire touching the ground. Now on the front, what I wanted to do is I want a little bit more negative camber so the tire naturally sits a little bit more at an angle. Then when I go around the corner, the tire is gonna get sucked underneath and it's gonna be nice and flat on the ground and that's kind of what you're going for. There's no perfect adjustment for camber when you're doing this. You gotta kinda go around and drive it and see how it goes. Now I have been battling understeer for quite a little while. Uh, here's a little video of autocross. You can hear me, I'm just basically just pushing through and making all kinds of tire noise. Now what I wanted to do here was that if I added a little bit more negative camber, I can actually get the tire to be more flat on the ground, thus getting a little bit more traction in the front. Today I got to take the Mustang out to the autocross event, got to try out the new suspension setup, and the camber plates pretty much helped fix the problem. There's still a little bit of understeer, but it's way better. If you guys like this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing. I'm going to be posting more videos on upcoming things that I got going on with this car. And you guys might want to see that. I do want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you next video.